Unbelievable. <laughs> Amazing. Like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. I will never forget that day until the day I die. When we saw the star, a star like no other star. We'd studied stars all our lives, and there in the star was a magnificent beacon, a signal light. Amazing. And it changed our lives forever. It changed our lives for good. Now we are <laughs> magi, wise men. Now some of you might say magician. That's not who we are. We're not magicians. We're astronomers, scholars, intellectuals, the scholars of our time, political leaders with great power. <laughs> And we were always searching, searching, longing, seeking for truth, for answers, for direction, so we could understand life, this life, and the life beyond this life. We studied the ancient superstitions and folk religion of our ancestors, but our search did never end. It never ended. We continued searching and seeking. Uh, looking for peace, inner peace, but it never seemed to remain in our grasp. And then one day, a man, young orphan Jew named Daniel, <laughs> he came to our country and he taught us <laughs> so many amazing things. But he, he interpreted great dreams from the king Nebuchadnezzar and because of that, Nebuchadnezzar set him over all the province of Babylon and he made Daniel leader over all the Magi. Daniel was a part of our tribe and we listened to him, my forebears that is, Many years ago, we listened to how he instructed us from the Hebrew scrolls and how there was one who would come, who would be the rescuer, who would be the redeemer, who would set the people free, who would rule with perfect justice and righteousness. And we learned so many things. Our hearts were drawn to the teachings of the God that Daniel worshipped, named Yahweh or Adonai. Yahweh, who rescued Daniel from a cave full of hungry lions. He rescued, he appeared in a hot human incinerator furnace. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not even singed, not even the hem of their garments were singed. Their Hebrew names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So many amazing things we saw the God of Daniel do. And the Magi listened closely to Daniel. They listened closely to these scrolls and we treasured them. But then later on, later on, my knees are getting old, I gotta sit down. <coughs> we had a ruler named King Darius the first and he told everybody we needed to start worshipping Zoroaster and worship the god Ahura Mazda to follow Zoroastrianism and so because we didn't want to learn uh, lose our political power we followed, we adapted to Zoroastrianism but our search for truth, our seeking for answers for why do we exist, why are we taking an air on this planet called Earth they were not resolved with Zoroastrianism or the superstitions and the ancient cultic religions of our forebears. Some of you are seeking, searching for truth, aren't you? I hear that some even in your time are, are even again following the way of Zoroastrianism. You're told, follow your heart. And yet, an ancient prophet, Jeremiah, <laughs> he said, the heart is deceitful above all things 
and desperately sick. Who can know it? Who can understand it? We're told, we're told to follow your own path to truth. There are many ways for truth, and you can find peace in any kind of thing and worship any kind of God. You can craft it yourself. You can carve it with your hands. You can fall down and worship the God you made with your hands. And then you can have peace or you can gather lots of wealth. We had lots of wealth. And then you'll have peace and then you'll have life and for all that we had just like you. That peace didn't come. That meaning for life did not come. So we kept on searching. We kept on searching. And I kept on reading. Daniel, (laughs) Daniel told us about Yahweh, the God who was not made by any human hand, not crafted by any human, the God who's not seen, but a God who (laughs) handiwork is seen everywhere. And so we kept seeking, searching the stars, <laughs> searching our hearts, searching the scrolls, wondering, would an answer come? Would an answer come? Hundreds of years again came and went, and our tribe magi, the teachings of Daniel, Of the Hebrew scrolls, they became mixed and skewed and ignored, and we were more confused than ever. And then one night, then one night, little boy, then one night, then one night, we were out stargazing. You've ever done that before? Yeah. We knew where all the stars were to be located. The constellations, we knew them all. And a new star appeared. A star we had never seen before. It was off far, far on the horizon. And by our best astronomy calculations, it was over Jerusalem, David's city, even Bethlehem. And then a thought came to me. <laughs> a thought came to me. And I told my friends that, that night, I said, there, there, there's a prophet that Daniel told us about. And, and he said something about that star, that out of the star, a, a scepter would rise and would rule over Israel and would rule over all the earth. And this star would change everything. And so we ran back to our dusky libraries and we searched and we searched and we found the scroll. Found the scroll. Listen, this is from a book you'd call Numbers from another ancient magi named Balaam. Interesting character, by the way. He said, the oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, and the oracle of the man whose eye is opened. The oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down yet having his eyes uncovered. I see him, but, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come forth from Jacob. A scepter shall rise from Israel. I knew it! It was there! <laughs> My uh, friends and I, we ran back outside into the darkest of nights and we saw the star was still there, just as was promised, just as was promised. Could this be it? Could this be the star that would point towards the Messiah? The one who would rescue, the one who would rule, the one who would be the good and righteous king over all the earth. There was great expectation, not only we heard from the Israelites about this Messiah, but we heard far, far and wide about this expectation and anticipation for someone who would rule with justice, who would be one of peace, a prince like no other. And so we began our journeys. Oh, we had to gather a great regal embassy. There probably wasn't just three of us, as you might think. 
we had servants and camels and lots of treasures and we had lots of food. We traveled for 900 miles up the Fertile Crescent along the great Euphrates River and then down, down through the mountains and hillsides into the little worn out places of Galilee. Interesting thing, though, while we traveled for months, months, <laughs> the star was no longer in the sky. But we still believed. And some of you, you are traveling, following God, and yet it seems like the star has gone out from your sky. You still need to keep believing. You may be walking and it seems like it's in the dark and yet you don't have light. It seems like you're in a hollow, empty, lonely place. We were in many empty, lonely places on our way to Jerusalem. And there was no star there like we had seen months before, yet we still kept believing. I heard one once say, don't doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. Still keep believing even when there's no star visible in your night. So we kept on going. And finally we arrived in Jerusalem. Tumultuous city run by a vassal lord named, he called himself King Herod. Fool indeed. We arrived and we said, We are here. Where has the king of the Jews been born? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Tell us, where is he? We assumed everybody would know where this baby child, the king, had been born. But only a few seemed to know. And instead, everybody got into a giant uproar. They were afraid King Herod would turn and, and go on a tyrannical, murderous raid and try to wipe out, eliminate any threat to his throne. And so the whole city almost went into a riot. We created quite a scene, I can't imagine, all of us out there. Kings, we looked like, from the east. Not your next-door neighbor, you might say. So, King Herod, he, he gathered his priests and his scribes, and he said to them, Tell me, tell me, tell me, where is this baby, this Messiah to be born? Tell me where! And in a stroke of wisdom, which was pretty rare for these, they said, He'll be born in Bethlehem, David's town. Bethlehem of Judah. And then they went back to the scrolls. Oh, we already knew. Uh, let me read it for you. Yeah. And he scrolled from the prophet Micah. They said, And you, Bethlehem, Land of Judah are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Oh, Micah was not the only prophet who foretold a ruler. Jeremiah spoke of a righteous branch. Isaiah spoke of a child who'd be born who would be the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. <laughs> Herod went into a tirade. Herod lived in a shroud of fear. A citadel of fear and lies. Some of you are there too. You find yourself in a prison of fear and lies and when you don't know the answer to something, you get angry or afraid, upset, frustrated. And yeah, Herod... He had a secret meeting with us. He said, shh, I don't want anybody to know what we're talking about. Come over here. And so we gathered around all our magi. That, he said, tell me, 
Where, where did you see the star? When did you see the star? How did you see the star? What does this star mean? He, he just pelted us with questions back and forth and back and forth. And we, we gave him the answers we had. And then he said, <laughs> so cunningly, but not smartly. Good, go on your search, and when you come back, report to me, so I may do come and worship him. Hmm. So, we stepped out of his citadel of fear and lies, out into the streets of Bethlehem, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't believe it. Do you know what we saw? The star reappeared! The star reappeared for us, and we rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. I can't dance anymore, but we danced, we jumped, and we shouted, and we rejoiced, and we shouted some more, and we sang, and we danced, and then we followed that star. It was an angelic heavenly light. Ah, oh, many scholars have tried to tr discern what it was. We just know where it took us. To Bethlehem, a little worn out town six miles south of Jerusalem, and and then outside of this little tiny town, a little side <laughs> trial, and there was a little tiny house, a humble little home, and the angelic heavenly light, the star, hung right above it, and there we saw him. Him. We saw him. We saw Jesus being held by his mother Mary. Tears filled our eyes, tears of joy. The presence of the Most High invaded our weary, worn hearts. For thousands of years, the Magi had searched and longed for truth, for life, for meaning, for peace. And there before our very eyes was the truth, was the life, was the way. We worshipped him. We worshipped him. We laid down our scepters. Oh, we laid down our crowns. And we worshipped him. We sang a simple little song. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Christ the Lord. We looked into the eyes of that little baby boy. We knew our search had finally come to an end. And then we went back to our treasures. We went back to our treasures and we had gold and frankincense and myrrh prepared. And here, we gave him our best treasures right here. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You see this little boy right here. Why did we give him our best earthly treasures? Because we had found the heavenly treasure, treasure which was worth so much more. So much more. That is what you do for the king. You do homage to Jesus. We give all because he's worthy. We bow down to his will. We bow down to his rule. We bow down to his way. And we worship him with our lives. And give him everything that we have because we have him. Some of you may be, maybe some of you are saying you follow him, but you're mostly ignoring him. Maybe some of you are searching and longing and looking for the answer to life and your search. End your search. Because at the feet of Jesus, whom we saw as a little child, as a little baby, we were in the very presence of God. 
Oh, Herod. <laughs> he, he tried to stamp us out. <laughs> he tried to exterminate Jesus. Couldn't do it. Because no human conspiracy overrules God's sovereignty. You can't stop God's son. <laughs> And so God calls you to bow before the Son, to end your search and to worship Him because He's worthy. To bow before Him, to give Him your all, and to say, we worship you, Christ the Lord. Would you sing that with me even right now? We worship you. Yes, yeah, sing it. Simple song. We worship you. We worship you, Christ the Lord. Sing it again, yes. We worship, if you mean it. <laughs> we worship you. We worship you, Christ the Lord. Fall on your knees. You know this one. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine, oh, night when Christ was born. Oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Do you worship him today? with your life, not just with your words? Do you follow him all of your days or do you ignore him most days? God is beckoning you to end your search. Maybe you've gathered around to hear this story today because you are doubting because there's been darkness in your life. Ah, listen. Uh, doubting, questioning heart is, is not the evidence of no faith, but the evidence of a faith worth fighting for. You keep believing. You keep following. And God will lead you home as he did for us, the Magi, thousands of years ago. To end your search for the truth to guide you to the way of life and peace. No one is beyond God's reach. <laughs> we were 900 miles away and God drew us near. That means no matter how far you are away, God is right there. No one is beyond God's love. All oh, that we beheld the glories of his love in his son, Jesus Christ, who had come to save his people from their sins, to fulfill all those prophecies of old. God loves you with an everlasting, never stopping, always and forever, never giving up love. Will you receive it today? God's uh, love reaches beyond and no one is ever beyond God's Son. He sees everything you've ever done, every word you've ever said, every thought you've ever had, and yet He still loves you, and He's still reaching for you and desiring to draw you near to worship His Son and to receive His Son as your King. Ha. To lay down. Yes. That's what the word worship means. To lay down. To lay down it all. And say, I believe. I believe. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Christ the Lord. Maybe today is the first day in your life that you truly see the light of Christ. Come to him today. Come to him today. We searched, we longed, we anticipated for this one to come. And he is the righteous ruler. Oh, he is the heavenly treasure 
for you, for you. So let us pray to him. Oh God in heaven, we praise you for your mercy. We praise you for your love that is always reaching, always seeking, always searching us out even when we can't find our way. You find us in our darkest night, on our lonely trail, in the dark night, hidden away in a library or on a hillside where the stars don't shine. Lost in our sin and our doubt and unrest and no peace, and yet you find us there because you love us so much. You sent your son to rescue us, to redeem us, and to save us. So for that we praise you, O oh God, and we worship your son today for who he is. And we look forward to his coming. If you believe that, you say, Amen. Amen. There are friends of mine who don't wear anything like what I'm wearing. They're going to be down here as the Noel is sung. You come. You come. You come and you worship the sun if you need to come and end your search today. End it today. Today is the day to end your search. <laughs> and you will rejoice with exceeding great joy. You will feel the very presence of the one true God invading your weary heart. You come and you talk with someone who loves him like I do.